we will discuss a specific heat of solids so we consider a simple solid consisting of n number of atoms since or, or the atoms in solids cannot translate unlike liquids and gases, but the atoms are free to vibrate about their equilibrium motion, equilibrium position. So, if we consider a simple solid having n number of atoms and we know the atoms in solids cannot translate unlike liquids and gases, right. But the atoms in the solid are free to vibrate about their equilibri equilibrium positions. Such vibrations are called lattice vibration. And can be thought as thought of as sound waves. propagating through the crystal lattice. Each atom in solids each atoms in a solid is specified by three independent position coordinates and three conjugate momentum coordinates. So, each atom in a solid is specified by three independent position coordinates and three conjugate momentum coordinates. Let us consider only small amplitude 
vibrations. In this case, we can expand the potential energy of interactions. So, in this case we can expand the potential energy of interactions between the atoms to give an expression which is quadratic in atomic displacement from their equilibrium positions. So, when the amplitude of vibration is small for those for this case we can uh, expand the potential energy of interaction between the atoms uh, to give an expression which is quadratic in atomic displacements from their equilibrium positions. It is always possible to perform a normal model analysis of the oscillations. In effect, we can find 3n independent modes of oscillation of the solid. So, remember we, we, we considered uh, a, a solid consist of, consisting of n number of atoms. So, for n number of atoms in a solid, we can consider 3 n independent modes of oscillations. Each mode of oscillation, each mode has its own particular oscillation frequency. and its own particular pattern, particular pattern of atomic displacements. any general on any general oscillation can be written as a linear combination of these normal modes. Thus, it is clear that
in normal mode coordinates the linear linearized lattice vibrations are equivalent equivalent to 3 n independent harmonic oscillators for simplicity we consider uh, harmonic oscillator model of course each oscillator corresponds to a different normal mode. So, basically in normal mode coordinates the linearized lattice vibrations are equivalent to 3 n number of harmonic oscillators. If we or if the lattice vibration if the lattice vibrations behave classically then according to equipartition theorem each normal mode of oscillation has an associated mean energy KBT in equilibrium at temperature T Kelvin. So, we get half KBT due to kinetic energy of the oscillation and half cavity for potential energy. So, if we first, if first we consider the lattice vibrations behave classically. So, according to equipartition theorem, I will explain uh, briefly what is equipartition theorem. Each normal mode of oscillation has an associated mean energy of KBT in equilibrium at temperature T Kelvin. So, in this KBT term, mean energy, mean energy KBT term, half kvt comes due to kinetic energy and half kvt comes from potential, potential energy. So, if you add them up you get kvt. Now, what is equipartition theorem? In brief we can say that equipartition theorem says that every quadratic term in the energy expression gives half kvt value. Okay, so, in case of lattice vibration if we consider lattice vibrations behave classically. So, the 
each normal mode of oscillation has an associated mean energy kVt. Out of this kVt, half kVt comes from kinetic energy and half kVt comes from the potential energy. Okay. So, we have how many normal modes of vibration? We have 3 n normal modes of vibrations. So, what is the energy value? Thus, the mean internal energy per mole of solids. Now, for per mole we are here considering n equals to n a because we initially we started with n number of atoms. Okay, so, suppose we consider n a number of atoms n equals to n a or Avogadro's number. So, the mean internal energy per mole of solid can write E average is 3 times N A times K B times T or we get 3 R T. Remember this per mole. Okay. So, what is the value of C V? Okay, so, the, so the, the molar heat capacity or heat capacity per mole, molar heat capacity at constant volume is we know how to calculate heat capacity at constant volume is del E by del T at constant V. So, if we do it we get 3 R okay, or we get 24.9 joules per mole per degree. Okay. So, in fact, at room temperature, most solids in particular metals have heat capacities which lie remarkably close to this value. So, what we got? We got if we consider that lattice vibrations behave classically, then we get heat capacity is a constant term which is nothing but 3 times r or molar heat capacity. Uh, the value of molar heat capacity is uh, 24.9 joules per mole per uh, degree and remarkably it has been found that at room temperature most solids in particular metals have heat capacities remarkably close to this value. This fact was discovered experimentally by Dulong and Petit at the beginning of beginning of the 19th century. So, the fact that heat, molar heat capacity of a solid is a constant term or, and it's equal, it equals to 24.9 joules per mole per degree 
uh, was discovered experimentally by uh, Dulong and Pettit long ago. But, but Dulong Pettit's law means heat capacity or molar heat capacity of a solid is 24.9 joules per moles per degree, Dulong Pettit's law is essentially a high temperature limit or you can say or uh, valids, valids at high temperature, high temperature only. The molar heat capacity cannot remain a constant as the temperature approaches absolute zero. Since the equation S T V is zero to T C V times C V T by T D T since this equation suggest is or entropy goes to infinity if C V is constant, which violates third law of thermodynamics. So, the molar heat capacity cannot remain a constant as temperature approaches absolute 0 because this equation suggests that uh, S goes to infinity when T goes to 0. When T goes to 0, if C V is constant, which violates third law of thermodynamics. We can make a crude model or of the behavior of C V at low temperatures by assuming that all the normal modes oscillate at the same frequency omega. This omega is nothing but twice pi times nu. Okay. And this is the simplest approximation one can think of that all the normal mode vibrations are or all the normal modes oscillate at the same frequency omega. This approximation
was first employed by Einstein. So, according to Einstein's model, all the normal modes are vibrating or oscillating at the same frequency omega. So, the solid, the solid acts like a set of 3n independent oscillators and they vibrate at the same frequency. This is Einstein's model according to Einstein's model. Now, we know average energy, the average energy of 3 n harmonic oscillators we say 3 uh, e, e, e average is 3 n h cross omega So, we know the average energy of 3 n harmonic oscillators is average energy is uh, E average is 3 n h cross omega times half plus 1 by E to the beta h cross omega minus 1. This we derived before while considering vibrational partition function. So, here h cross h cross is h by twice pi and as I said omega is twice pi by twice pi times nu. So, the heat capacity C V is if we do it we by doing the by differentiating average energy at constant uh, average energy with respect to temperature at constant n and v. So, we get uh, we get C v is 3 minus 3 n a h cross omega or n we consider not n a here h cross omega by k b t to the 2 minus e to the beta h cross omega times h cross omega by e to the beta h cross omega minus 1 to the 2. So, this is the expression for C v and if we simplify this, we get C v is 3 n 3 n h cross omega by k b t to the 2 and then one k b term will be here and then we have e to the beta h cross omega by e to the beta h cross omega minus 1 to the 2. So, this is the expression for C v. Now, if we uh, consider consider theta e is h cross omega by k b and this theta e, e is known as Einstein temperature. So, 
So, if we substitute h cross omega by k b by theta e in the above expression of C v, we get C v is 3 n r times theta e by t to the 2, then e to the theta e by t by e to the theta e by t minus 1 to the 2. When n equals to when number of atoms equals to Avogadro number, then heat capacity per mole or molar heat capacity of solid we can write C V bar molar heat capacity of solid or per molar heat capacity per mole. So, when n equals to n a in small n equals to 1. So, we get C v is 3 r theta e by t to the 2 e to the theta e by t by e to the theta e by t minus 1 to the 2. Okay, so, this is the general uh, expression according to uh, Einstein's model this is the general expression for uh, molar heat capacity according to Einstein's model. Now, we consider high temperature limit So, high temperature limit means when T is much much greater than theta e or K B T is much much greater than H cross so, in that case this C V bar reduces to 3 R, right. So, how it is, it is coming that uh, we can easily see actually. So, okay. So, it is coming like here. So, here uh, in the numerator we have e to the theta e by t we can write this one as e to the x if we consider theta e by t is x is 1 plus x to the plus x to the 2 by factorial 2 and blah blah blah. So, when x is small x very small we can write e to the theta e by t is 1 right. And in the denominator, we have in the denominator we have e to the theta e by t minus 1 to the 2. So, we can write this one as when we can approximate this one as 1 plus theta e by t minus 1 to the 2. So, we can write theta e by t to the 2 when t is much much greater than theta e or theta e by t is much much lower than 1. So, if we make those approximation we get molar heat capacity of solid is 3 r. So, this is when t is very very greater than theta e, but we are more interested into low temperature behavior of C v bar rather than high temperature behavior. So, when so low temperature limit now we consider ok. So, when T is much much smaller than theta e or theta e by t is much much greater than 1. So, we have the general expression of C v. So, we have C v equals to we have C v equals to 3 by uh, 3 r 
C B bar equals to 3 R times theta e by t to the 2 e to the theta e by t by e to the theta e by t minus 1 to the 2. Now, if we apply this condition that theta e by t is much much greater than 1, so we can write C V bar is 3 r theta e by t to the 2 e to the minus theta e by t. How did we arrive that uh, that uh, to that expression? So, we have C v bar now when theta e by t is much much greater than 1. So, e to the theta e by t minus 1 we can write e to the theta e by t. So, we in the denominator we have e to the theta e by t minus 1 to so we get basically e to the 2 theta e by t this is in the denominator. And if we substitute e to the theta e by t minus 1 to the 2 by e to the 2 theta e by t, then we arrived into this expression. So, it says that this expression since we have e to the minus theta e by t. So, this says that the specific heat approaches 0 exponentially when t goes to 0. In reality, the specific heat, the specific heat of solids do not approach 0 quite as quickly as suggested by Einstein model. when t goes to 0. The experimentally observed low temperature behavior behavior of C V is like C V is proportional to the T to the 3. Okay. So, yes C V goes to 0 as T goes to 0, but Einstein's model proposes that C V goes to 0 in the limit of low temperature exponentially. But in reality, C V is actually proportional to T to the 3 at low temperature. So, Einstein could solve this problem partially, not fully. So, what was wrong in Einstein's theory? Einstein's, according to Einstein's theory, all normal modes oscillate at the same frequency and that was a really crude approximation here. Okay. So, the reason for discrepancy is the crude approximation 
crude approximation that all normal modes have the same frequency. In fact, in fact, long wavelength long wavelength modes have lower frequency lower frequencies than short wavelength mode. So, the former are more harder, harder to freeze out than the latter because the spacing between quantum energy levels h cross omega is smaller in the former in the former case the molar heat capacity does not decrease with temperature does not decrease with temperature as rapidly as suggested by Einstein's model by Einstein's model because because those long wavelength because the, those long wavelength modes are able to able to make significant con significant contribution to heat capacity even at low temperature. A much or a, a more realistic model of lattice vibrations was developed by the Dutch physicist Peter Debye in 
1912. In the Debye model, the frequencies of the normal modes of vibration are estimated by treating the solid as an isotropic continuous medium. This approach is reasonable because the only modes with or the only modes which really matter at low temperatures are the long wavelength mode. That is those whose wavelengths greatly exceed the interatomic spacing. It is plausible that that these modes are not particularly sensitive to the discrete nature of the solid. That is the fact that it is made up of atoms rather than being continuous. So, according to Dewey theory, so what is Dewey theory of solids? Next, we discuss Dewey theory of solids. So, according to Dewey theory, according to the Dewey theory, so basically, I am skipping uh, some steps before arriving the. Uh, final expression for C v according to D y. So, according to D y theory C v can be written as 9 n times k b times t by theta, theta d to the 3 and limit goes from 0 to theta d by t x to the 4 e to the x by e to the x minus 1 to the 
to dx. Okay, so suppose this is our equation number one. Okay, where theta d is, where first x is, where x is h nu d, nu d is the dy frequency by k b t, and theta d is h nu d by k b. So theta d is known as d by temperature. and nu d is the d by frequency. Now, let us consider a function d. Now, let us consider a function d which is function of t by theta d is 3 times t by theta d to the 3 0 to theta d by t x to the 4 by e to the x minus 1 to the 2 dx and this d is known as dy function. So, if we substitute the value of d in expression 1, we get C v, suppose this is our equation number 2. Now, if we substitute the value of d from equation 2 into equation 1, we get C v is 3 n k b times d and suppose this is our equation number 3. And this equation 3 must be evaluated numerically for arbitrary values of t by theta d. Now, we consider two different uh, temperature level. So, now at high temperature, when temperature is sufficiently high, theta d by t goes to 0. Hence, x goes to 0. So, we can write 0 to theta d by t integral of 0 to theta d by t x to the 4 e to the x by e to the x minus 1 to the 2 times dx as by 1 plus x minus 1 and x is very small. So, we can write 0 to theta d by t x to the 2 dx and if we do it we get 1 by 3 theta d by t to the 3. So, if we substitute this in uh, dy expression of equation uh, 2, we get d which is function of t by theta d equals to 1. So, it gives us C v is 3 n k b is 3 n r or C v bar is 3 r or 24.9 joules per mole per degree. So, dy theory also can predict the value of 
uh, molar heat capacity of solids at high temperature. But again, uh, we are interested more into uh, low temperature limit. So, next we consider the low temperature limit of uh, Debye-Huckel theory, uh, sorry Debye theory. Okay. So, in the low temperature or at low temperature, theta d by t goes to infinity. Now, so, so the d y function d So, when temperature is, is very low, we get dy function d as 4 pi to the 4 by 5 t by theta d to the 3. So, C v is 12 pi to the 4 by 5 and k v t by theta d to 3. So, C v is proportional to t to the 3, this is known as famous t 3 law. So, according to dy theory, heat capacity of solid at high temperature is a constant term like 24.9 joules per mole per degree as predicted by Dulong Petit's law as well as Einstein's model. And at low temperature limit, uh, C v goes to T to the 3 according to Dy theory of solid. Thank you.